Hey guys, welcome back to the SL Vanguard Cup Series. I'm Jason Kaplan, joined by Blueberry John, 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 Blue, John Blairies. <laughs> Close. Close. Almost Close got enough. there. Almost got there. Uh, by Blueberries, and we now have our finals finally coming underway. It's Red Team 1 up against Red Team 2, a rematch of Cup number 5, and we're going to find out which Red Team is the best team. Yep. Hopefully in uh, about 20 minutes' time. Hopefully. Well, we have the bands. It is um, one Taka, band. Taka, Taka. Taka, Taka. All right. So... <laughs> Well, that was easy. Going yes, to start. Won't see any Takas in that match. So hopefully, well, maybe Jewel. Maybe we see again Fortress. Very excited to see who is going to be picked. Well, at least. All right. There we go. Raf is going to play Jewel. Look at me. Locked in cool. And Adiga is going to support with Catherine. All right. Jumping back in, Jetpacks locked in as well as MYQ and Red Wolf. Let's start the finals of the 8th ESL Vainglory Cup Series here live from Cologne, Germany. Red 1 versus Red 2 in the finals. Well, same finals as in the 5th Cup and same as the VGL Double Elimination May. All right. Let's start, have a look, what did they buy? A lot of attack speed, well, attack damage it is. Red Wolf playing Ringo. MYQ is going for Fortress and Jetpacks going for Vox. Well, I haven't seen him playing Vox a lot. I don't know, well, might be interesting. Him and Jungle, Raph, I think he might go lane. Well, yeah, look at me and Adiga in the jungle. Make sure you guys stay tuned as well for After the Cup, where Gibbs from House of Baptists will be breaking down the cup and I think playing some games on his own stream. They'll be hosted here, so make sure to stay tuned on this stream. Meantime, Jewel versus uh, Ringo. This one's going to be interesting. I think we saw mm. Red Wolf playing Ringo uh, last cup too. All right. And uh, did a very good job on it, doing the same kind of similar strategy to try to be very aggressive early on. Well, you have to be. You have to pre. Uh, well, we have to. Um let's say, annoy Jewel as much as possible from taking the last hits and make use of the book of eulogies. But, well, there's the first fight. Same situation as the semifinals before. MYQ Jetpacks engaging at the same point here again. And MYQ picking up the first blood on to look at me who just respawned in this second. Ref is joining, but what a misplay. Um, well, I think, well, he couldn't rocket leap out of that one. And therefore, yeah, because he's not level two. So Vox and Ringo, double ranged with my Q to help speed them up. Interesting. I think they're going to be very strong early on, but once the enemy team gets tanky, it's going to be really rough for them. They're going to be relatively squishy. And they're going to have to be very careful. Yep. Uh, when we get to that point, so if they want to win, they got to win early, and this is definitely the good start to making that happen. But Red Wolf, he might be overextended, and he's dead. There's no escaping that for him. That'll be one kill coming in for Red Team 2. Good gank. Well, actually, nice timing. He didn't see this coming at all. T2 won the score. Well, nothing too spectacular concerning the item builds. Vox, played by Jetpacks, is going for the Blazing Zalbo for some nice attack speed. Adiga playing Catherine, of course. He's going for the contract. And here we do see a stun. Nigel. Adiga, he's in a pretty bad spot. Well, that was... Very, very quick again here. This time Jetpacks picking up because MYQ picked up the first kill in the fight. So I think he wants to provide Jetpacks as much, as many kills. Oh, as Raph possible. getting oh. killed. Yeah. All right. And uh, Red Wolf, you can see the items he's built up to to really support this. He wants to be very aggressive, not trying to stack and wait for an item later on. He wants to win the lane now. And if he can keep up uh, plays like that, he will be able to. We're going to see Raph going for Crystal Power. So going for that big red button, going for that... Complete deletion of the enemy team if you can hit it across multiple people. If. If. Yeah, that is that is the big question. Yes. But Red Wolf, he's getting some momentum going. You gotta be careful, especially uh, Raph. He's gotta be very careful um, to not you know die in the lane any more than he already has. Now waiting to gank actually Red Wolf <laughs> once such again. A big investment of time. That's such a big investment. Uh, and that didn't hit at all. So well, Red Red Wolf this time. Smarter than before, and this time Jetpacks MYQ. There they go. Well, there's the ping. Hmm. Well, there comes the jump. 
And the engage wall, well, this is a lot of damage here. Just like you said, two rangers. Early game, very strong, but it's about actually the mid and the late game to keep it up and did, have the right position. Did Red Wolf last hit a minion before attacking Raph just so he gets the guaranteed crit? I think he did because there was uh, like the second or the last um, hit was a crit. Yeah. But I did not see if he did this. But if he did, it's a very smart move. And right, Deja will spot out my Q and jetpacks, and then we'll back away. Five to one. That is a 1,300 gold lead, too, only four minutes in. That is a huge lead. Well, let's see if they can keep this momentum up. Obviously, oh, the game's not over just yet. But that whole, like, they can slow someone down with the Keely shot, then speed themselves up with my Q. And not to mention Jetpacks has his, you know, his dash. Like, that's a lot of mobility for their team. And if, you're, if they're three on one, like, you're not going to escape that team. All right. Ooh, well, this is going to be bad. Yep. Yeah. Uh, he can Sonic zoom out. MYQ here in the bad position. Two versus three. Well, Raf just hitting that one. Beautiful, the rocket leap. Oh, Jetpack's going to the right because Red Wolf is joining from this side. He has to hit and run somehow. This is exactly the problem. Well, they are Rangers, but it's about the positioning. And once you have a bad positioning, wow, Red Wolf just picking up that kill here. He's got boots in eight seconds. Whoa. Nice rocket leap, no chance. Well, look at me just getting that one. Six to four the score, well, just 500 gold difference. Favor for Team Red One, therefore, we will see. Still a very, very interesting gold mine. Almost, yeah, 50%. Nice amount of gold. And Raf just continuing his farm. 24 against 29, Red Wolf. Should join soon. There he comes. Okay, so. Seeing Red Team 2 get out of this early game slump. We've seen them hit the mid game, getting uh, relatively tanky. Look at me, it's going to be really hard to deal with now. Raph just needs at level 6 to get his ultimate online before they can really start to apply some power or apply some threat to the enemy team. And Red Wolf just barely running away from Adija there. He'll be fine. I really wonder the red team one. I feel like they can they can definitely snowball this game if they get like a nice ace in the next couple of minutes. Like they have to be very careful. The longer this game goes on, the deadlier uh, red team two will get, and the tankier they'll get. They will get the gold mine. And uh, looking for the fight, looking for Adija, looking for look at me. And Raph might have just jumped a little bit too deep, but jetpack's getting relatively low. The sounds comes in, and look at me will fall. The big red button comes in as well, and Red Wolf <laughs> not even getting killed. He just barely survives. Jetpack's trying to kite. Red Wolf trying to help but pop the ultimate in there, and Raph will fall to the burn, and Adija will die thereafter. Oh, Red Wolf, he might fall from this one, but he gets the kill. He gets the ace just in time. And now they're going to be aggressive and push in a takeaway. I think some, uh, some camps and maybe get some damage onto this first turret. Amazing fight first. It looked like uh, Team 2 is going to make it because Raf, well, that was an amazing big, big red button. And um, Jetpacks missed his ultimate, the wait for it at all. So I think he didn't hit no, anyone. No, no, he hit, um, he hit Raf. Oh he, oh, he hit Raf? Yeah, he all hit right. Raf. Okay. Well, therefore. Just the silence part of it. I don't know about the damage part of it. Okay. Great fight, both teams continuing their jungle. Let's have a look at the item builds here. All right, look at me going for, well, what's well Jetpacks actually went for in the last game, Shiver Steel and the Blazing Salvo. I think there is some action going on. Yeah, there is. So there comes a jump from Ref and Jetpacks might fall first. Yes, he is immediately followed by, look at me, one for one trade so far. There comes the Achilles shot onto Ref. NYQ following him. Well, uh, Red Wolf picking up the kill. It's actually the right one who should pick it up. NYQ shouldn't. And well, Adiga, he is picking up Red Wolf. Oh, it's interesting if he can escape, but I think, well, he can't at least... Two, one... Oh, he backs off. Merkless pursuit out of that one. And there we can see MYQ here using that jump over the wall. Okay, so a little bit of a tricky fight. Red Wolf and Jetpacks getting bursted down. Jetpacks being a little bit tankier now after that... Um, Complete just lockdown uh, that was used against him. Look at me pop Nilto onto him. Raph getting the stun. DJ there as well. And all they really need is just, you know, to escape that a little bit of Wama combo of a stun. And they'll be really hard to uh, to really do much after that. Like, Adija, if he can land an ultimate, or really, uh, not Adija, sorry, Raph, can okay, land a good ultimate across the team, then that can turn the tides. But if their stuns get mitigated, 
yep. by Crucible or Reflex Block, then they're going to have a a really hard time pulling out the rest of that fight with the range advantage that Red Team 1's going to have. MYQ is going in, but Raf jumping in as well, receiving a 350 crit. MYQ, well, there comes the big red button missing, and the ultimate coming back, stunning Adiga actually. Well, uh, it is uh, Adiga picking up the kill, picking up the double kill, and the Wolves are dealing some damage here to Team Red 2. And Jetpacks, well, it is all up to him. Can he Why counter? Why are they fighting this? Why are they fighting? Oh, dear this Lord. is the question I do also ask myself. Wow, Jetpack's just picking up the easy ace here. Well, Red Team was doing great, but then just uh, pack your stuff and run back after that one. Wow. They didn't. They didn't have the breath. <laughs> didn't have the breath. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was... I don't even know why they tried to go in for the fight. It was a good job of Jetpack's to stay alive, and they were able to get Red Wolf down and MyQ as well. But you can't forget, like, you take down one range character, they still have another. And that's 14 to 9, about 9 and a half, 10 minutes in. And they do have a 3.3 thousand gold lead that just seemed to continue to grow as time goes on. All right. Gold miner, over three quarter full. So, therefore, well, right to they should try to get it. Might be a little bit too risky. I think they, concerning where they are currently going. They are just leaving that one untouched. Okay, so. Let's see an item. Sorrowblade picked up for Red Wolf. He's got a lot of damage behind him. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious about Vox's build, because now he's going for a little bit of crystal power, it seems. Yeah, well, that's actually a good choice. Just like to be. Um, also have some crystal damage, considering the item builds from Red 2. Otherwise, they just go for, like, Atlas and try to block it. Mm. Alright, Jetpack's trying to be aggressive in the jungle. We'll spot out Adija and we'll back away. But they're starting to group up as a team a little bit more. They do have the turret advantage. Goldmine recently just paid out, so they have a little extra gold from that too. As you can see, extending to 4,000 gold difference. And they do have the infusion ready on Wolf to use. They're just waiting for that next moment. My Q's got the fountain, so we can help keep them alive. This comp, it's, it's, it's working out, funny enough. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to run from this team. You kind of have to commit a fight to it with how well they can kite you, what they can stutter step, not to mention the movement speeds and, de or, and decrease speeds. Decrease speeds? <laughs> um, increase and decrease of speeds that they can apply to you and themselves. All right. Well, Jetpacks, well, the bone saw is pretty interesting. I think he's going for... Um Aftershock or something like this. At least um, this is where the items lead to. But anyway, not a lot of action here at minute 11.30. Team Red 2 sticking together like glue after the last two team fights. So they don't want to split up at all. I think this is the way they should go for. And the thing is, if Red 1 tries to split up themselves into different directions, once a team fight starting, just to kite the enemy, they should agree to focus only one target. And this is actually what they haven't been doing, I think. Well, there's the next fight. And look, MYQ receiving damage. He's the tank. No, get away from him. Hellfire Brew going for look at me. There comes the jump. Beautiful jump. Sonic zoom wall. There comes the big red button. Look at me is going down. And as well as Red Wolf. Well, Raph here and the... Well, yeah. No chance to escape. Adiga. He's the only guy, but, well, he was followed by Attack of the Pack, so therefore at least they know where he is. Oh! Uh, yeah. Just got back. Time. 16 to 10. All right, Red One currently dominating that fight. I think they won the fifth cup in the finals against Red 2. Yep, Red Team 1 has they, been able to. They won the uh, VGL finals against Red 2. So therefore, should be Red 2's turn now to show their brother, sister, uh, uncle, team, whatever Jason <laughs> would like to call it, that they also have the chance. But, well, this is the Engage 2 versus 3. Um, and MYQ versus Jetpacks here. But now Red Wolf is joining, and I think this might end bad for Red 2. But nice damage here from Raph, actually. They're spreading out. They're trying to pull them in different directions, and that will be Raph going down to Red Wolf. He's going to be tanked up. Look at me. Adesia trying to run away as Jetpack's there to help out. And again, they're just kiting so yep. well. There's nothing that Red Team 2 can stop or to do to stop them. They have all these stuns, but even the stuns aren't enough to lock them down in place. So 
look at me even can't follow them. Because like Jetpacks is just Sonic zooming out. Um, has a nice gap clo closer. Red Wolf anyway. He most of the time has a very, very good positioning. Therefore, well done. 18 to 10 here. Finals of the 8th ESL Vainglory Cup Series. And um, Red Team one they are currently placed first i think the yep. overall ranking and red team two i think they are around about fourth or fifth if i'm not it's wrong. red team one first 390 points collab in second red team two is in six at 265 points all right six so a big difference in points uh for yep. those two teams but pretty much these two teams are now hun I, I i will say it these are hun these two teams are 100 percent guaranteed to be in the finals now 100 percent. yeah red team one was already guaranteed, but Red Team 2 now 100% confident they will be there. So they don't have to show too many strats in this in this finals or even in the next one. It's obviously they want to pick up the win. They want to be the best Red Team um, that's in the uh, organization. But you, know, you don't have to show anything crazy until you know the 14th. That's where all the real money's won. That's where all the real glory and fame is. All right, Gold Miner just giving that money. So look at the gold gap. I mean. This is definitely 7, a lot. 7,000? Yeah, 7,000 wow. after 50 minutes. I think um, Red Team 2 is very unlikely that they can even recover from that one. But we will see. If they're going to, it's got to last a long time. There's no way they can do it anytime soon. And even Mikey's going in, Adija. Not going to take too much damage just yet. But i got to be relatively careful. My Q is just not afraid. Like they're not, they're not, you know, expending cooldowns on him. There's no point. They're looking for jetpacks who <laughs> they didn't even commit to after they do get the stun onto him. Rev was just trying to kite. He's gonna instantly blue blown up. My Q runs straight into the big red button, and this could be a fight that Red Team Two could win. Jetpacks is gonna have to back away from this, and one stun's all it's gonna take to lock him down. I, don't, I think they have anything to really stop him from getting, uh, you know, completely locked. And well, it looks like they will be able to just barely escape this. Even maybe able, able to turn onto a DJ who's already very low on HP. But the stun comes in. Jetpacks almost getting burst down, but he does get the dash away. The smite's not going to be enough. And now Jetpacks doesn't really have much sustain after that. He will fall, but it will be a two-for-one trade in favor of Red Team Two. It was a good fight, good focus. Um, a bit lucky, but I think Ref Twenty Nine um, hitting his big red button pretty okay, dealing some nice damage, and therefore. 2 to 1. Alright. He finished the Brock myth, so therefore he f he's even trying to get more and more damage out of his ultimate, followed by the Metal Jacket, which I personally see very, very rarely. Well, actually, not the worst choice, because Jetpacks playing Vox and Red Wolf on Ringo, they are just going for pure weapon power, and, well, this is the Clockwork, which does not provide any any crystal power so therefore armor is mm -hmm. the topic for red team 2. it does help i mean jetpacks cooldown wise like he can you know song zoom yep. a lot more but either way they're starting off the kraken it's not falling actually that quickly funny enough uh, down about half Dodge, uh, dj gonna be coming in to uh, actually spot them doing this and that's where they have to be very careful. They need to burst down as quick as they possibly can. They crack in, pop in the ultimates, bigger button, not gonna be enough to steal it away, but jetpacks will be taken down by it. And now they're forced to immediately retreat. Adisha trying to chase them away. Red Wolf trying to just kite them in between as they're doing damage to the Kraken as it has uh, spawned or turned over. And look at me now, looking for the chase on a Red Wolf. The ultimate hasn't come out. There it is, lands on a red. In a stun, lasting that long. And Raph trying to come in with the leap, but he gets stunned down. He gets locked up completely. And that would be the Goomba Stomp coming in from Raph to help finish off the kill. The Kraken, though, is on its way. Raph getting interrupted as he's backing away by the minion mine. The Kraken is now slowly walking past all the minions. It'd be funny if they can actually just step and instantly kill enemy minions that are under him <laughs> or under her. But I don't think that's going to be a turret taken at all. No, they are definitely taking that down very quick. Good uh, fight. Maybe, well, I think talking about a comeback uh, might be a bit uh, too early, but they are on their way to do so. So 14 to 19. Still for what red one. All right, double sorrow blade. Well, that hurts. Serpent mask, nice life steal here. MYQ playing fortress. Well, he has a warhorn. I see this item also very rarely. Um, I don't know. Have you seen it like over the just the on last fortresses mostly? Yeah, sometimes on Catherine's. I mean, it's nice because of the 
immense uh, movement speed it gives, but... Um, well, well, I mean, it's perfect for their comp, too, because Fortress yeah. can speed up someone um, if you attack that target, but also it can speed up his whole team to help them escape. Uh, Red Team 2 is trying to track them down. As long as they can kite, that's all they need to do to win these fights, and... Absolutely. Uh, they have to be very careful. Jetpack needs to not walk into our big red button. That's also a, a really key, key, uh, a key point of how to not lose a fight. Uh, or how to lose a fight, I guess, if Jetpack does walk into it, but... They have the mobility. Now it's just about making it work. You know, the team's getting relatively tanky, so they're not able to take them down as quickly. They can't get away with as many mistakes as they've been able to in the past. But if they can get Red Team 2 in opposition, if, if Red Team 1 can dodge the correct abilities, then it should honestly be an easy fight for them. It's just about that initial start. Don't get caught out in the bad spot. Have everyone on your team there. Dodge the big red button. <laughs> and then you should be good to go. Well, yeah, they don't have actually a Crucible on Red Team 2, so therefore um, pretty hard to actually dodge the ultimate from Jetpacks or Hellfire Brew from Red Wolf. But I think it is about the lockdown from Raf and um, Adiga with their stuns and of course look at me with the ulti in the end. Well, let's see. I'm surprised Red Wolf didn't actually build any crit. Like our attack speed. I mean, obviously attack speed I can understand because it was B, but mm. didn't build much crit. Just going for pure damage. I feel like crits and life still together are just ridiculous because you get a huge burst yep. of health that the other team won't really expect. And I mean, honestly, you won't really expect either, but we'll see how it works out. 20 minutes in, this game lasting a little bit longer than the others that we've had. And it looks like Red Team want to group up and potentially force a push. I don't know why they are actually going back or why. Okay, seems like Adiga is going to buy something. There's no other reason to go back. Not a lot of action the last one or two minutes. Doesn't the Thunderstrike off uh, Jewel really stack up the broken uh, myth really quickly? Well, that is a pretty good question. I think that's why his big red button just like did a ridiculous amount of damage because he was able to stack it three times and then just unleash. Hmm. There, that with the Shadow Glass is just ridiculous. No, I mean, if that one hits uh, throughout the next fight, and could happen that. I, I would love to see Jetpacks and Rolf getting stunned together. And then? And then a big robot across yeah. both of them, and they instantly just evaporate. <laughs> <laughs> just like we have seen uh, the big crits from... Um... Oh, Kraken's back up. Oh. Are they starting it? Nope. No, sorry. Go ahead. Just uh, like we saw the big crits off Jewel in the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was amazing. All right, Red Wolf, he has 108, 109, 111, so Rev, but he's also pretty good, 100, so therefore not too big after 21 minutes, I think that's pretty fine. Look at me, 45 creep kills and jetpacks, well, he has 71, I mean, of course, cool, he's not the fastest uh, jungler, but jetpacks is going more risky with the second ranger there. I like what a uh, look at me's picked up, the breaking point. Mm. That's going to be pretty ridiculous in fights if he doesn't get focused on immediately. Yep. But I mean, the bones are from jetpacks and together with uh, the breaking point. It's interesting. There comes the crack. No vision, no mine, nothing. So they will just be notified when Kraken is captured. Nobody's going even to think about going there. Why is Red World not taking this? He's got life steal. There you go. All right, well, the Kraken buff might be, it doesn't really matter too much. All right, so what will they be accomplish with the Kraken this time? Last time it didn't do anything. I think it hit the turret twice and then it, it died. <laughs> yeah. Fusion's being popped. Raph has quite a bit of damage behind him. Mm. And the clockwork, so mm -hmm. really wants to minimize the cooldown from, well, any spells he's actually using. Uh, let's see what he has overdriven. Well, the ultimate, I mean, no doubt. Uh, but the Thunderstrike as well. Well, okay, there you go. It's understandable. Yep. All right, now the Kraken moving in. They do have the potential to poke down this tower. They also have to be careful. They don't want to be engaged on. Yeah, now it's about really just try to take down the Kraken as soon as possible. But the good thing now is about Red, Red 1. 
where they just have the Rangers. And look at this. The Blast Tremor and the Ultimate Wall. <laughs> he can't go in, he can't go out. Nice down from Look At Me. There he goes down, actually, from Hell's Hearth here. Greatly thrown. There comes the Rocket Leap from Ref, not hitting perfectly. And look at Jetpacks. He's, he tries to kite, taking one, taking two, two, and taking the third. There you go. Well, this is definitely the game, and this game we can call it GG. Winner of the 8th ESL Vainglory Cup Series is Red 1. Red 2, they are going home second. Again, unfortunately, and Red Team 1 has now won three cups, if I'm not mistaken. Cup 5, Cup 6, and now Cup number 8. That's a lot. So, yeah, a lot. Definitely, even diet, really. Letting the Kraken finish it off. And I... Let her get a little bit of glory. That would be funny if she died and then they didn't finish the game. And if I'm not wrong, I think Red 1, they performed at the beginning very good at the ESL Cup Series and then dropped off somehow, like one cup or the they other. They got third place in the first cup. Yeah. Uh, Red Team 2 got second. And then they weren't top four yeah, until right. Cup 4. They was. started to get some momentum back. I think they're running with a, like, a different lineup then, too. Like They had a change around a couple of people in their roster, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. I, c I could completely be mistaken, to be honest. Um, we've had a lot of cups already. Like I said, eight cups. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, but they pick up the victory. They used to themselves the victor and as a uh, three-time standing team. Only team to do that so far. I think Collabs is actually tied, for, or not tied, but in close second with uh, with a two. But I think that's going to do it for our shows. It was well played by uh, both teams. It was really cool to see the double Ranger combo. Yeah. Um, it worked out really well in the beginning. It had a couple of, you know, sp uh, speed bumps. There we go. <laughs> um, but they got there in the end. Yeah. Um, very, very good game, um, asset, um, jetpacks, and uh, it was Red Wolf. They did a great job with the kiting mm -hmm. and with the move movement speed provided by MYQ playing Fortress and the Warhorn. That was it. That was a really, really good game. Yep. All right, guys. Well, that's going to be it for us today here for cut number eight at ESL. We'll be bringing you cut number nine on Wednesday with Blueberries and myself. And then on Sunday, it should be the finals. So a week yeah. from today, and we'll be here kicking off the finals with the top eight teams throughout the entire season. Make sure to stay tuned. Gibbs from House of Batiatis will be breaking down the cup after this. he will be hosted on this stream. And I think he'll be playing some games himself. Maybe doing some ice giveaways. I'm not really sure on that one. Um, but I would definitely assume it on my part. But... Uh, any, anything else to say before we do head off? It was a pleasure casting with you, as always. And yeah, we will see us Wednesday. All right, guys. Well, make sure to tune in for that. Make sure to stick around for the stream after. And we'll see you in just a few days for cut number nine.